Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my Gear Up Ultimate Iron Man. Uh, well, what is a Gear Up Ultimate Iron Man you may ask? Well on most accounts players are going to be skipping large chunks of gear progression as they are either inferior weapons or not part of the meta. Well on this account I want to progress through every gear upgrade in a linear fashion the way it was meant to be done. While I don't think anyone was meant to get a bronze hasta, I'm going to be getting it anyway. We're going to be starting from a bronze dagger and slowly upgrading our gear one by one until we have some of the strongest gear in the game. So we're going to be completing quests in a weird order, we're going to be getting skill requirements in a weird order, but I think that's going to make for a unique account. Anyway guys, if you are enjoying the series, I would appreciate it if you left the video a like, and let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to do today is create a games necklace, as there's still a few teleports uh, that I need, and the games necklace will provide an easy teleport to Birthorpe. Now the easiest way for me to make jewelry is to telegraph this gold bar in the Varrock basement and from there teleport to Alcarid and from there the rest of our supplies should just be in shops around Alcarid. Now unfortunately it's kind of a pain to make jewelry items until uh, we've leveled up our house a fair bit. Okay the gem trader here does occasionally have emeralds but right now we just need a sapphire and uh, we actually forgot to telegraph two gold bars that was pretty dumb but from here there's everything we need we can go ahead and cut the sapphire. Uh, create a sapphire necklace out of it and then we just need a cosmic rune to enchant it which luckily we did complete the rogue trader minigame last time as we can just go ahead and buy it right from I'm gonna say Alibaba but that is the pizza place by my house Ali Morrison that's what it's called and there we go we have our first games necklace I think we'll go ahead and drop the ghost beak amulet <laughs> we'll just go back and get it later okay well as we're in the desert already I'm gonna go ahead and start the tourist trap quest uh, I have a really interesting method for smithing uh, iron dart tips which I'm gonna try out but first up we need to do the quest to unlock darts and not to mention you get a pretty solid XP reward for completing the quest. Trying to get this guy into his safe spot took me actually 45 minutes. Of course Slayer Music 1 did it in one try but uh, god I must be tired because this took me so long to do. Well that was completely awful I forgot how much I hate that quest it took me about an hour and a half to do. So really bad. Now luckily we do get these skill rewards. I'm personally going to put it in smithing for an ultimate ironman as I think it's a lot harder to get smithing experience and training agility is pretty much the exact same on an ultimate as it is on a regular account. So we're going to put both of the rewards into smithing which got us all the way to 34. A nice little boost there but most importantly we can now create a dart and we actually got a gear upgrade with the bronze dart. Now for thrown items they actually have their own category as their strength bonuses were really not indicative of how strong they were. So I put stuff like darts, throwing knives, throwing axes, chinchampas in their own category separate from regular weapons. Now we have unlocked darts and we do have some iron ore but the one thing we will need is a bit of money as we do need to buy nature runes and I believe they are 230 from Ali Morrison. But here is the general concept. We're going to go ahead and superheat iron ore and then we're going to run to an anvil, create iron dart tips out of them and then repeat. Now as we have a bit of noted iron ore uh, we can do this right in Varrock but uh, once we run out of iron we can go into the Falador mine and there's actually an anvil right beside a iron deposit uh, so we'll be able to do it all there in a contained area. Oh there, and <laughs> that's actually a gear upgrade. Uh, we we're trying to just go ahead and use up some of our inventory spaces and get rid of these uh, mine runes but the I think that's actually the next item in the melee tree, the bronze spear. Well there's another one, <laughs> oh my god. Now, these things are not actually that rare, I thought they were. Well that is an unexpected gear upgrade but I will take it. Okay I'm gonna do the agility pyramid until I have around 100,000 coins I think. That will take a while and the agility pyramid like it wears on you. At first it's not too bad but then after a while I just kind of start getting pissed off and you don't want to do it anymore so I'm gonna try to do it till 100k and after that I'm probably gonna want to leave. Well there it is 100,000 coins and I do not want to go back there anytime soon. I was actually losing my temper legitimately at this giant pyramid. Okay now with a hundred thousand coins that should allow us to get around 400 uh, nature runes which uh, should translate into around 4,000 dart tips which actually should be a fair bit of ranged training. Now I won't actually have the Ava's accumulator for a while so I have to pick them up by hand which kind of sucks but that is the way of the ultimate Ironman. Alright so I finished up superheating the iron ore I had in my inventory and that actually got us to level 45 magic. That's pretty nice and we can now teleport to Camelot. That will save us a fair bit of time and now with the remaining 300 or so nature runes let's go to the Falador mine uh, and I'll go ahead and show you a little nifty training method. 
Okay, so this is the general concept. We went to the Falador mine close to where the anvil spot is, and there's also an iron ore right up here. So we're just going to go ahead and mine out a full inventory of iron ore, and I'm going to attempt to superheat it between each iron ore that I mine which actually has been adding up to a fair bit of magic experience. And there we go, we went ahead and filled up our entire inventory. From there, we're going to run back to the anvil, and we'll create dart tips. Uh, this part of it's kind of nice and AFK, and the part about this method that is really good is everything is stackable, uh, which means there's no need to go back to a bank except to restock on runes, and we can continuously make dart tips. Now, I'm about halfway through my runes, and the experience rates that I was getting were about 12k mining experience, around 12k smithing experience, and around 15 or 16k uh, magic experience, which isn't bad considering uh, the stage that my account is at. Okay, I'm just finishing up with the rest of the dart tips, and there's level 30 mining, a nice milestone level to reach. Uh, we can now mine coal. I'm not really sure how useful mining will be overall. I won't really need it so much for smithing. Uh, quest requirements, I guess, and maybe getting the coal bag. I think this is going to be the last smithing level. There is 40 smithing, another nice milestone. Uh, most importantly, we can go ahead and create gold bars now, which will be useful, assuming I can get some gold ore, noted or not. And that is going to be it for the rest of the dart tips. We ended up with 42.50, uh, which is quite a few. I kind of realized the other day, for whatever reason, iron darts are actually worth more than steel darts. Okay, so we're actually out of money, and there's one last part of this I kind of forgot, and that is that you need to put feathers on them. Uh, for whatever reason, I thought you could just throw the darts like this. So unfortunately, I actually need to go back to the agility pyramid again uh, to be able to afford the feathers. And there's an agility level, 53 agility, just from the pyramid. Now I have to be careful not to get now I have to be careful not to get too much agility experience here, or else I'll need to go to another course. Okay, so this is going to be pretty quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and buy 4250 of the feather pack and from there we're gonna go ahead and create a bunch of darts now one thing i actually forgot about is the load of fletching experience i'm gonna be getting look how quickly it goes i uh, know i sped this clip up but it's still pretty damn quick oh i think we're gonna squeeze in one more fletching level there is level 35 fletching and there is 4200 darts which we can now use to get some range experience uh, we are level one ranged right now uh, so i may actually do a quest first to bump that up a bit but that is a lot of darts now, uh, next up here, I'm going to be completing the Death to the Dorgishan quest, and there's actually quite a few different reasons. Uh, first up here, and most importantly, I need range and experience to get me from level 1, or else I will just be uh, wasting a lot of these darts. And also, completing this quest allows you to steal from ham chests, or ham storerooms, uh, which is actually a really good way to make money on an ultimate ironman, so that's another good reason. Okay, I was actually severely underprepared for this fight, and it's in an instance too, so... So if I die here, I actually would have lost everything. Luckily, I was able to kind of safe spot him here, and we will be okay, but I really should have thought that through better, as that could have set me back a fair bit of time. I think I would have kept my graceful, uh, which is the most important part right now. We really need to finish that off and store it, so we don't have to worry about losing it so much. And there we go, there is the Death to the Dorgishan quest done. That is 2,000 thieving and ranging experience, uh, which will get me to level 38 thieving already, very nice, and uh, to 13 range from 1, which will get me a nice little boost in damage, so I won't be like wasting so many darts and hitting 1s the entire time. Alright, well I think it's time to go ahead and do some ranged training now, now that we have uh, a few range levels as well as ammunition. Okay, so we're actually looking for a trader here. There is Relac, and the frog leather boots are, I think, the weakest. I, I don't understand how this armor works at all. In some cases, the frog leather is stronger than regular leather, and in other cases, it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and buy one of each, and we'll upgrade, I think, a few pieces here. I think just the boots, potentially. Oh my goodness, I can't even wear it. 25 range will be fine, but 25 defense will take a little while. Now is as good a time as any to go ahead and craft some of these early game leather items. Uh, we'll go ahead and craft one of each. Uh, we'll go make the leather cowl, which will be the weakest ranged helmet, I guess. Oh, okay, we made two. Oh, shit. Okay, I think we'll be fine still. We're also going to make the leather chaps as well as the leather body. Both of them being the weakest in their respective category. And that will leave us room to upgrade to the frog leather when we can equip it, as it will still probably be the best option until I can get snakeskin armor, uh, which will require a higher crafting level, as will the koi, unfortunately. 
Okay, this is going pretty smoothly. Honestly, I think the cows are maybe a little too low level. I need something with a bit more HP as I have to actually go pick up the darts manually. And the darts that end up on the ground end up getting more spread out uh, as the monster is really weak and I kill them quickly. And there is level 25 ranged. We could probably move on to something else. Maybe dark wizards. Uh, maybe regular wizards. I actually do need uh, some of the gear from there anyway. Okay, now I didn't think this through too much, but uh, I'm doing the Merlin's Crystal quest, and the reason for that is so that I can complete the Holy Grail quest. Now, one problem that I just realized is, is Excalibur is a weapon on the list, and it's not going to be unlocked for quite a few more upgrades, and you actually do use it in the quest to kill a monster, uh, so I will probably have to wait until I can complete the Holy Grail quest. Oh, wow. <laughs> there are two beginner clue scrolls on the ground, but what I'm really looking for here is the Black Robe. Uh, which we just picked up. That is another gear upgrade for magic. We are just killing the dark wizards here, which we need two items from it. The black robe as well as the wizard hat dark, which we'll go ahead and try to get next. Okay, that was pretty quick. There is the wizard hat. That's all we need. And we'll run down now to the blue wizards, uh, which have the next upgrade. Wouldn't really matter too much which order I get these in, but they do have separate names, even though they are kind of the same item. There we go. There is the blue wizard robe. I think I like that one slightly more, so we'll just go ahead and keep that one. The blue wizards here actually are a bit stronger, so I'm probably not going to stay here any longer than I need to, as I'll need a supply of food. Oh, and <laughs> there's the blue wizard hat. That is it. That's all the items we need from them. That is going to be it for the wizards for now, even though they are pretty good training. And they do drop runes, which is good, but uh, I think we're probably going to move on somewhere else. Okay, we're just kind of AFKing at the Agility Course in Canifus, and we did want to clear up one extra inventory spot, which was taken up by the Marks of Grace. Uh, that is going to be 40 Marks of Grace. We can now go ahead and buy the Graceful Boots, uh, which we don't have anything important in our boot slot right now anyway. That is going to be our third piece of Graceful. We still have the top, bottom, and the hood to get, which are going to be slightly more expensive, but we're pretty much halfway, I'd say. And that's perfect. It brings us down to nearly zero kilograms with everything we have right now. Our inventory is kind of cluttered, but I do kind of need everything that's there. The only thing we really need to get rid of is that stupid skull scepter. Now I actually wanted to work on my ranged weapon upgrades. The very first weapon in the game that is the weakest is the regular crossbow, uh, which fun fact is actually free to play, but we were able to buy it directly from the store. Okay, the next weapon we need is actually the Phoenix crossbow. And I really messed this up pretty hard. I was doing it with an alt account because, of course, I don't have any friends to do with. But I made myself the wrong gang orientation. Okay, I think we can go ahead and actually telekinetic grab the Phoenix crossbow here. Yes, we can. Perfect. <laughs> Whew, that would have been a little unfortunate. There we go. That is another gear upgrade. A very classic looking weapon and uh, very terrible as well. I think it may be equal to the regular crossbow, though, which is pretty bad. Okay, I kind of messed this up. I don't actually need the bronze crossbow next, but I will hold on to it until I can actually upgrade to it. To make a bronze crossbow required quite a few different pieces. Uh, we had to go get a bronze bar for the bronze limbs. We needed to go get a raw beef for the crossbow string. And we needed a regular crossbow stock from a regular log. But there we go, that is the bronze crossbow. Uh, like I said, out of order. <laughs> we'll go ahead and buy the other items first. I don't know what I was thinking, but we will need that in a minute regardless. Okay, the next item we need is from the Ranging Tutor, uh, but while we're here, we're going to actually make it so that I automatically equip ammunition when I pick it up off the ground. That is just a really nice quality of life thing to have on, and I forgot to do it initially. We'll just claim our bow. There is the training bow, which is the third or fourth weakest weapon in the entire game, but it looks kind of cool, I would say. Once again, we'll go ahead and break it in front of her. Okay, now we're going to go through a bunch of items here. Uh, now, for these early game levels, yes, there are going to be a lot of items available in the store especially for range, but once we get into the mid game, not much is going to be available. Now one recommendation people had in the last video is I should have to kill a monster with it. It got a lot of popularity, but I'm going to say no on that one. It's just another kind of arbitrary rule. And once we get a little bit further on the account, I will be having to use some of these weird weapons to kill monsters. Just in the beginning, it's not as necessary, and that will probably be coming up pretty soon. Now, unfortunately for me, and I totally forgot about this, the Swamp Lizard is a ranged weapon, and it has a fairly weak ranged bonus, but I would classify it as a ranged weapon, maybe a magic weapon, but it is here. Okay, well, first up here we did the Natural History Museum quiz, which will get us to level 9 Hunter, actually, as well as Slayer, that's kind of nice. So we can skip right ahead to the Copper Wagtail. Uh, early game Hunter is very slow, so I'm not very excited for that. There we go, there's level 15 Hunter. We ended up catching 
these kebits or whatever they're called. Uh, so now we can go and catch Ruby Harvest, which is a type of butterfly, and that will speed things up a significant amount. Uh, but yeah, very slow start for Hunter. That took me like half an hour to get... Ooh, yeah, give me my Draymond Staff back. But yeah, early game Hunter is ridiculously slow. It really speeds up once you get to Swamp Lizards at level 29, but that's probably where I'll end up stopping for now. Now what's really good about Ruby Harvest is you can actually set up some bird traps as well and just catch them on the side. So you're kind of actively hunting two things at once, which really does speed things up a bit. Okay, there's level 20 Hunter. We can now place two traps, which again will hopefully speed things up more. Currently I'm getting around 10k an hour, which is very slow, but things will speed up and we'll get to 29 in no time. And with this last butterfly, that will be level 29 Hunter. We can now catch the Swamp Lizard, which was my initial goal for the episode. However, I did notice that <laughs> fairly soon after that, I will need to catch the Orange Lizard. Uh, because it is also a ranged weapon. I really don't like these stupid lizards. Now with that in mind, I may actually train past 29 Hunter for now. Ah, uh, you piece of crap. I'm not really sure if this weapon should be on both the magic and ranged table. I guess in the end it won't matter too much, as I already have the requirement out of the way, so I can just go ahead and catch it again. And there we go, we got one. That is another gear upgrade for ranged. The Swamp Lizard may actually be worth using. Got to be the funniest weapon in the game. My girlfriend was watching me catch these lizards, and she was horrified that I would catch such a cute little lizard, and I was like, don't worry about it. I'm not going to be killing them. I'm just going to be filling their mouth up with tar and using it as a weapon. There is level 55 agility. I just wanted to go knock that out because it's a nice milestone level. Uh, we are getting some marks of grace, although I did work very hard to get rid of them. I do, I do really need to get the full set, so I think I'll just go ahead and keep these and do a bit of agility on the side as I catch swamp lizards. And there is level 40 hunter, a pretty big level for me because we can now place three of the net traps, which should actually boost my experience rate up to... I think around 40k an hour. The next weapon I'll need is the orange lizard or the orange salamander at 47 hunter, which honestly won't take too long. Things really do start to speed up at this level. I think it'll only really take an hour to get to 47 and honestly getting hunter levels is going to be useful anyway. And I'll need the orange salamander like almost immediately after this. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, we finally got started with ranged and I think that is going to be my primary combat skill for quite a while. Uh, my short term goal is to unlock the Dorgishin crossbow because it's fairly low level and a pretty decent training option with decently easy to obtain ammunition. I think that's going to be a really good place to go for now and I can keep that crossbow for a long time. We're just up to 27 range for now but we're getting close to 7 or total level on episode number 3 I think is not too bad. We got a fair bit of magic experience, mining experience as well as hunter experience and I still have quite a few darts to use. Uh, for the next episode I'll try to get 47 hunter uh, before we get started. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have any questions, any suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next episode.